of Meru County. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker and Honorable Senators. I'll be sharing the 30 minutes with my learning friend, Mr. Marius Maranya. In summary, Mr. Speaker and Honorable Senators, the impeachment motion before you is the third one in barely a year presented before the Assembly against the Honorable Governor Kawira Mwangaza. The first impeachment motion was presented before the Assembly on 22nd of November 2022. It did not reach the Senate because the High Court issued an order preventing the MCS from debating it. The second one was filed on the 5th of December and it was brought before this Assembly. It contained Mr. Speaker, 62 charges of nepotism, legal appointments, usurpation of the constitutional and statutory functions of county organs. It contained allegations on incitement, bullying and vilification of other leaders. A matter now still before you. It revolved around disrespect to the assembly through uh, forceful entry and mobilization of riots against the assembly. A matter now before you in different particulars. It involved violation of public finance uh, management laws. Again, a matter before you, only the facts have changed, the fundamental problem remaining. And then, of course, uh, uh, that motion came here and it did not succeed. Notably, Mr. Speaker, when we came, the governor took the posture of an innocent and vulnerable victim of toxic mas masculinity, harmful patriarchy, gender stereotyping, gender discrimination, and uh, political machinations. And in short, the governor took the posture that if something went wrong in Meru, as we submit, something has been terribly wrong in Meru for a year now and counting. Our defense was, it wasn't me. It reminded us of Shaggy's song, Mr. Speaker, in which a young man is caught engaging in some hunky panky And even though he recorded on camera, he is caught in all the, with all the evidence, a singular response through and through, it wasn't me. After we moved from this Senate, Mr. Speaker and Honorable Senators, even though the Senate dismissed the charges, it gave the governor many pieces of free advice, free lessons on how to run the county. And after we left here, there was a brief honeymoon of peace in Meru, lasting only a few weeks. This honeymoon was characterized by courtesy calls by various leaders pledging in public to support the governor and promises by the governor that she would turn over a new leaf and Meru would be lastly peaceful and orderly and run in accordance with the constitution. When we came here, Mr. Speaker, I recall prefacing our presentation about, or rather, with the story of a leader in Europe, who that time we were telling you, had waged wars on all four directions of the campus, north, south, east, and west, on each direction. This leader was at war with another country and another civilization for no good reason. Today, Mr. Speaker, we want to preface the motion before you with yet another allegory from Europe about the tragedy of a man from Russia called Kodraty Reyelev. This was a multi-talented uh, Russian citizen who was a poet, publisher, oralist, military officer. He was the embodiment of all the nice things a single man can achieve in a single lifetime. He was implicated in a treasonable act called the Decembrist Uprising of 1825 in Russia. 
which sought to depose the Russian monarch, those days the monarchs were called Tsars, from office. And after he was convicted of this offense, he was sentenced to public execution by quartering. This is a method of execution, Mr. Speaker, that evolved tying the four limbs to a horse and the horse is being driven in different directions or cutting the body in four pieces and exposing the bowels and whatnot. Pleas were made to Sir Nicholas, who was the monarch, that this was too macabre a method of execution and even though the sentence could not be vacated, the king was implored to impose a more humane way of execution and the king agreed that Kodrati Rayelev could be executed by hanging, which I think is the method in our laws for executing people. On the day of execution, and in those days, Mr. Speaker, executions were done in public stadiums, like Nyayo Stadium, full of people and spectators. So on the day of execution, this gentleman is led to the gallows, the crowds watching in the full stadium, and as he fell, you know, you're supposed to fall so that your neck breaks and you die. The rope broke and Kodrati Rayelev fell to the ground. And after a few seconds of dizziness, he dusted himself and addressed the gathering, telling the crowd, you see, in Russia, they don't know how to do anything properly. They don't even know how to make a rope. We are submitting, Mr. Speaker and Honorable Senators, that by the governor persisting in the very series of misconduct that brought us here one year ago, the only change being this particulars, she's actually telling you that you see in Kenya, the Senate doesn't know how to do anything properly, not even how to impeach a rogue governor. Anyway, after this guy fell to the ground, in Russia then this was considered a message from the gods, that the gods did not intend the prisoner to be executed, and the king was allowed to grant a pardon if this type of miracle happened. So, a messenger was sent on horseback to the monarch uh, in a large white horse to tell him about this miracle and request the monarch, as was the custom in Russia, to sign the pardon. And indeed, the monarch began drafting the pardon, and just as he was about to sign it, he asked the messenger, by the way, did Rayelev say anything when this miracle of breaking of the rope in a public hanging occurred? And of course, the messenger told the king, yes, he said in Russia, they don't know how to do anything, not even how to make a rope. And the monarch said, in that case, let us prove the contrary. The monarch tore the, the pardon and directed that the execution be repeated the following day and this time the rope did not break marking the end of the sad story of Kodrati Rayelev, a Russian poet, singer, uh, military officer and many other things. Why do we say this story, Mr. Speaker? We'll be presenting evidence before you, and even as the charges were read, you heard several times the clerk saying this issue was alive in the previous proceedings. What happened? The governor, after the brief few weeks of camaraderie, adopted a defiant stance in which she held, and she has it even in her own evidence, several public rallies defiantly telling whoever can to listen, Kaende, kaende, kabati, kabati. Kaende, kaende, Mr. Speaker, is sheng, is Nairobi slang for I don't care. Whatever will be, will be, I'll do what I do. In Swahili, they say, naliwe liwalo. That is the meaning of kaende, kaende. And we'll be showing you how, throughout the last one year, even after the graceful lessons from Senator Tobiko, I recall, from the other senators, the governor's mantra in persisting on this a series of misconduct is, I don't care, whatever will be, will be. Kyusera, Kyusera, whatever will be, will be. She doesn't care about the consequences. 
the future and what not. That is how, Mr. Speaker, we have come before you with a motion arranged under seven thematic counts, setting out 39 specific forms of gross violations of the law and the constitution, and which, in our humble submission, are conduct and becoming of any leader. Mr. Speaker, we expect, and it will happen, although I'm not a prophet, just like last time, the governor will appear on this podium taking the posture of an innocent and vulnerable victim of toxic masculinity, harmful patriarchy, gender stereotyping, political schemes. That's what our response tells you. It is back to, it wasn't me by Shaggy. And the governor, if you want to confirm it, at page two of our response, she tells you, this motion will not be here. It is a scheme by our deputy who is power hungry to take the governorship through the back door. She tells you it is the injury check. She tells you if our own officials, our own secretary, our own count, uh, chief of staff has done anything wrong, even the things she acknowledged, she said they bear their own responsibility. It wasn't me. In short, she will come to you looking as meek as a lamp. But we are, luckily we have lived through the experience, Mr. Speaker. Our message to the Senate is if you acquit her this time, she will walk out this door and it will be kinde, kinde, kusera, kusera. Whatever will be, will be, I don't care, naliwe liwalo, and Meru will be back to the perpetual, endless crisis that it has been gafted for a year. We will be showing you that the governor has made several admissions before the county assembly. What we find strange is that now in our response to you, she produces documents she failed to produce before the assembly. We will be able to show you beyond any shadow of doubt that those documents are forgeries. And in conclusion, so that my learning colleague will take the remaining bit, just like last time, Chair, we are telling you not to fall for the rules. If you see humble, meek, polite looking governor, it is because the occasion of the day requires that look meek, humble, vulnerable, and whatnot. But if you make the mistake uh, this time round, it will be, Q sera, sera, whatever will be, will be, I don't care. Kaende, kaende, that is what she will do. And for those reasons, for purposes of my part, Chair, we are asking you to borrow from Nicholas I of Rashi in 1825-1826 to prove that the Senate of the Republic of Kenya can actually do things properly by impeaching a rogue governor. I let the floor to my learning colleague, Mr. Mari Maranya. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members of the Senate. My name is Marius Maranya. And Honorable Speaker, for the interest of, of, uh, of time, allow me to jump right into it. I will start by setting out the mandate of the Senate, as has been clearly set out by, previously by Apex Court. The Court of Appeal, in the case of Wambora's case, as well as the Supreme Court in the Sunko's case, did set the mandate of this house as clear as their role is to investigate and confirm that there exists sufficient evidence to substantiate the allegation made against the governor. Therefore, the Supreme Court noted that the Senate does not sit as an appellate forum. Theirs is a single role, that is to investigate and confirm that the allegation, as well as the evidence that has been adduced by the Senate, is substantiated. They have gone ahead, Honorable Speaker, to state that impeachment proceedings are not in the nature of criminal proceedings. They are not proceedings to establish culpability or criminal culpability against the governor. 
However, they have stated, the court has stated, you know, that the impeachment proceedings is all about accountability. It's all about political responsibility. It's, po it's all about political governance. And as a result of that, they have set the standard of proof. Unlike in criminal cases where the standard of proof is beyond reasonable doubt, the proceedings of impeachment, it is not required to prove beyond reasonable doubt. In, indeed, the Senate went ahead and stated that the proof is way below the standard of, uh, uh, sorry, way, way below that of a balance, uh, uh, beyond reasonable doubt, but slightly above that of a balance of probability. In the fullness of time, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, we shall produce evidence upon your leave to call evidence that to prove that the governor has failed or breached the political responsibility. She is in breach of political accountability, so she is in breach of accountability, and she is in breach of political governance in a manner, in a manner that warrants her impeachment. We shall again demonstrate to this Honorable House that the conduct of the governor over time, over uh, the one year she has been in office, has not been beyond reproach as is required. The, governor, the, the conduct of a state officer should be beyond re reproach. Indeed, it's likened to that of a sister's wife. But instead, or to the contrary, the governor has behaved in a manner that has been construed by this house as well as the court to amount to an impeachable conduct. We shall demonstrate that one upon the opportune time, Honorable Speaker, when we shall be required to call evidence and adduce, uh, to call witnesses as well as adduce evidence. We shall demonstrate, Honorable Speaker, that the governor, a once a pedigree person, has disastrously turned tragic and has been like likened in Mero County to uh, King Saul. We shall demonstrate that the relationship between the governor and the people of Meru, the relationship with the governor and the leaders of Meru, both elected and, and uh, political and non-political, our relationship with women organizations in Meru, our relationship with all actors, including the informal government called Yudjeke and all other leaders, including her deputy, has irretrievably broken down. And that therefore, there exist irreconcilable differences between the governor and everybody, all actors within Meru. We shall demonstrate that one clearly, Honorable Speaker, when we will have a chance to, to adduce evidence. We shall also demonstrate to you in the fullness of time how the governor has placed the county resources that is appropriated by this Honorable House to Meru County has been placed under the custody or under the domain of our relatives, and that is a relative with very close blood consanguinity, that is sister, brother, for one reason, Honorable Speaker, to plunder it, to plunder it. We shall demonstrate how Meru County are having a, a very high prevalence of cancer, and it is even said that we top in the, in the, entire, in the, in the entire world, not even in the, in, 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 in the, in the country, which has been prevalent for quite a long time, Meru has been leading in cancer. And when May, the county got an opportunity from an international well-wisher that please send us a group of technical persons, technical in terms of cancer, cancer treatment, to come and benchmark with us for purpose, to come and inspect the, the cancer treatment uh, machines for purposes of equipping Meru Cancer Treatment uh, uh, Center the governor was audacious enough to get clearance from the Minister of uh, Devolution and was, you'll be surprised that uh, instead of getting for the oncologist, the radiologist within Meru, within serving the cancer, cancer center in Meru, was audacious enough to put into the flight her sister, her brother, and her brother-in-law to go at, for two weeks in China to go and be friendly of themselves. This is an opportunity that we lost as a county. It's an opportunity that we lost to equip the only cancer center that we have in Meru. We shall demonstrate that one at the opportune time. And the letter that was sent to the, that is not even shocking enough, the letter that was sent to the Ministry of Revolution as well as to the, to the Chinese embassy is that the following 
persons, a clear mis case of misrepresent misrepresentation, are technical person matters of cancer. Yet, most of them, their education qualification cannot be accounted for. And the most educated in that team of sisters and brothers was one holding a diploma. Diploma, di diploma in pharmaceutical technology. That is an assistant to a pharmacist. Even a pharmacist was, is not qualified in that, that one. And remember, this is done while leaving out qualified oncologists, qualified radiologists, and all manner of experts in relation to cancer treatment. We shall demonstrate to you at the opportune time how the governor has employed eight extra chief officers without an approval of the county assembly at all. It's like the president appointing a minister and do not subject him to uh, uh, the National Assembly for approval. These chief officers, most of them are, are completely unqualified. They do not even belong, they don't even have the minimum requirements, the minimum academic requirement. We shall demonstrate when you'll be asked to call, uh, allowed to call evidence, our governor has used our Colea program to pseudo government money, to pseudo government money. We shall demonstrate at <coughs> the opportune time how government vehicles have been staged for to pursue the Okolea uh, program, which is a program not meant to help people, but to vilify leaders and other persons who are assumed not to be, you know, to, to, to be raising any, any issue. We shall demonstrate at the opportune time how the governor has used her sister and her brother to pseudo the government money to the tune of just a, 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 a cursory look at it, 78 million shillings going to an individual in the name of prepayments. Prepayments. Where a sister would owe eight impressed in one day. In one day. Eight impressed in one day. We shall demonstrate that one when we'll be, we'll be, we'll be uh, required to call evidence. We shall also urge you, Honorable Speaker, that the governor in front of you is not a first-time offender. He's not a first offender, and indeed she's a repeat offender who does not require or does not deserve the favors of this court. Honorable Speaker, we shall, we, I, will also allow, I will also reiterate the role of Senate as far as devolution is concerned. Honorable Senate, you spend a whole lot of time to pass budgets, for the interest of county, for the interest of devolution, only for it to be placed under the dis uh, at the disposal of sisters or, or relative for purposes of bladder. This you have a sword. You are the custodian of devolution. You have the sword, and you can't sit lying down for, for long. You have the you, you spare the rod, and the child will be spoiled. We shall be asking you to please crack the whip against the governor for the interest of Mary. We will be faced with two competing interests. One, devolution to work in Meru for the interests of Meru, and number two, to help the governor save her private job. Good, good thing is that that will be public interest. You'll be confronted with a public interest against a private interest. Kindly save the governor, uh, save, save, save the, 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 the Meru at the expense of saving the, the governor. My apologies, yeah. <laughs> my, my apologies. So, save, save, the Meru, save the entire people of Meru and not the... Honor, sorry. Honorable Speaker, at the opportune time, we shall demonstrate that the center cannot hold any more. And we'll be urging you to save the members of the county assembly that back and forth, back and forth to and from the Senate, to and from the Senate. If someone has been brought here barely 10 months ago, there must be an issue. There must, it is not just in vain, it is a resort where the centre is not able to hold anymore. We shall demonstrate how the governor has completely violated a court order, completely, with a lot of, just like she, she contempted against this, this Senate by completely making a, a mockery of their ad advisory by honourable for 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 a, for a whole year. Sorry, sorry. For, I'm reminded it's for a whole year. The way the governor has completely usurped the county public service board. We'll give you an example where the governor advertised for three officers in her office. That is her personal public communication officer one and two. 
thereof. One and two, and the governor shortlisted 17 for purposes of recruiting three, and out of 17, the governor only recruited one. Out of 17 who applied, uh, I mean, uh, of, instead, of, inst instead, of, instead of recruiting three, the governor recruited six. And what surprises me, and this should also surprise the Senate, is that out of the three that were recruited, only one was in the shortlist. Only one in the shortlist. The other five were not, shortlist, were not in the shortlist, and they were not even applicants. We shall demonstrate this one. Honorable Speaker, I have had a cursory look at a uh, defense which he has only attempted to, in the misappropriation of, fund, of funds, the governor has only attempted to, to prove by submitting impressed in relation to only, instead of 70, accounting for 78 million, she has only accounted for 2.3 million. And if you look at the 2.3 million, the documents that have been, uh, have, been, uh, have, been, have, been uh, have been used, that is the work ticket as well as the, the voucher, 99% of them are not signed by the examiner, are not signed by the director of accounts, and therefore they have been prepared hurriedly for purposes of your consumption. We shall demonstrate to you how a certain work ticket, how one work, work ticket has been used to account for 17 impressed. It has been used 17 times with the same uh, registration number, the same serial number, has been used 17 times. And when we, we, we call upon to call evidence, we shall demonstrate that one clearly. We shall demonstrate you, to you also how even the document, the work tickets that have been used do not follow that natural chronology. Do not follow natural chronology to the extent, to the extent that it is indicated that the governor on, 17, on the 7th of October went to Nairobi. The next which follows is 10th of October. And the next that, that follows, you find it is 4th of April a year after. You start wondering whether the governor was able to return, you know, the old access back to uh, some months ago. That is clearly a demonstration of, uh, of forgery. You look at a document, you'll be surprised that she has zero defense. What she has is just a mere counterclaim. You are asked, why did you steal this government money? Oh, you say during check -in. Why did you say this one? Oh, you ask why did you usurp the powers of the county assembly or oh, the deputy speaker? You ask this one or oh, that. Instead of clearly saying I have not done this and this is the evidence to that, to that effect. To that, to that effect. We shall demonstrate. Uh, I remember uh, I was taught by the Honorable Senator Professor uh, Tom Ogenda who told us at least if you are you decide to answer a wrong question other than the one that was asked, please try and answer it rightly, uh, correctly. And instead, the governor did not address the, defense, the, 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 the claims, and in her defense, she produced her own counterclaim in form of her own a motion to impeach who, and answered it wrongly. It's a double jeopardy. You get the, the question wrong, and you answer it wrongly. So, Honorable Speaker, with that, uh, because of the interest of time, we shall be at the opportune time be called upon to produce all the evidence or to produce all the evidence in respect to the matters that we have raised. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Next is opening statement on behalf of the Governor. Council, you have 30 minutes. At the end of the 30 minutes, the microphone will go off. Anything you say after that will be off record and of no use to your client. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, and uh, distinguished senators. My name is Alicia Ongoya, for the record. It gives me great pleasure, Mr. Speaker, sir, members of the Senate, to address you representing the Honorable Kawira Mwangaza, the Governor Meru County. We find it necessary to open our remarks by reflecting on the wisdom that informed the framers of our constitution in prescribing a two-tier process of removal of a governor from office. This case has taught us that the framers of this process were indeed wise. Why do I say this? This house occupies a higher quasi-judicial pedestal in these proceedings for three reasons. Number one, in this house, the accused